There we go. Not every SRT4 is a cream puff. Um, <laughs> with that being said, I mean, you've seen some of the other ones that I worked on are pretty nice. And, well, you know, every once in a while you run into one that really needs some help. Um, this one has a shifting problem and a leaking heater core. It's a driver, but there's a lot of stuff that was done incorrectly and some stuff that's damaged. Um, so I'm just going to give a quick walk around. We're going to check this thing out before I dig into it. So here we go. Um, car's not gorgeous. Like I said, driver, torn bumper cover. It does have some rust issues. Um, you know, we have these shifting issues, but it looks like somebody put the shift selector plate on and they use silicone. Silicone on a transmission is definitely a no-no. Um, I'm going to be replacing the transmission in here. And I usually pull the intake. It just makes it easier. That way stuff's out of the way. I get down in here. I ain't worried about fighting with nothing. Not only that, on a car uh, that I didn't have a part, I can go over everything. It's only a couple bucks for a gasket. But I noticed we have busted ears off of an intake here on both sides. Okay. GAB weld on there. We've got a bunch of silicone. So we are going to be replacing the intake. And it definitely needs it. Um, the car is pretty, pretty dirty. It's been sitting for a while. Um, I'm looking at this and I can see that this is bent right here. It looks like the shifter cables and all that stuff is on right. Um, the car does start, uh, everything seems to be working with the clutch itself. Um, anytime you install one of these, you want to have these pointed down because basically moisture runs down because of gravity so you don't want water to go in and go out so if something would come up you definitely want it to fall out which is why i'm going to flip this around make sure it's going the correct way um inside the car here i'm busy looking at the shifter that is a little dark but hopefully we can see um right down here this bushing is sticking out like somebody tried prying something off so this shift bar here is bent. Uh, the one on the other side has a bolt through it, but it is actually, that one's bent and going this way. Um, and this shifter is lifted up a little too high. There's supposed to be a little plastic bushing right down inside here. I actually found that underneath the hood, but um, we are gonna be replacing this. Just wanting to shift a little bit. Not back in a second. We are way crossover adjustment is way off so i'm kind of curious to see what this is what's wrong with this thing inside the transmission um i think it had some shifting issues before so that's what we're going to be messing with there it's missing a radio install bezel i have one of those so i'll probably end up throwing it in here uh some pillar gauges and uh the dash here so we're going to get into this we're going to see what we can find and like i said it had I think it had the slip over, slip over uh, rocker panels put on it at one time. It does have some rust back here. It does have some, some Raceland coilovers, um, aftermarket, looks like an AGP kit for the motor mounts and the trans mount, if you've seen that. And underneath, there's a hard pipe here. <sighs> I don't know what's going on here. Some kind of bolt there. But we're going to get everything pulled apart. Everything's going to be a whole lot nicer after we get done in here. I'm just going to clean up what I'm touching. Because like I said, we're just doing a trans job. Um, a clutch was installed in here. And the transmission wasn't working before that. So we're going to do what we can to get that straightened out. Along with swapping out the heater core. Um, I have plenty of videos on both of this stuff. So... I'll just touch in, show you what we find, and maybe give a couple pointers as I'm going through on this install. All right, let's see. Let's see how good this uh, intake is uh, silicone on here. I didn't expect it to come off that easy. Yeah, broken right off. Oh, I know. This stuff is fucking nuts. Let's turn it 
turn. Okay. All right, so the trans is out. Um, there was like different bolts in here. It looks like somebody actually opened this up and tapped it larger. Uh, we got a bolt with a nut. Um, I mean, like I said, the clutch worked good. It's a new fork. Uh, it was an older used clutch that, that was installed. That was good. Um, it actually came out of something I had. Um, we got everything else apart here. Like I said, there were some different bolts. I was missing these ones here. This one's broke off, but we'll get a third in here. Clean this up too before we go reassembling this. Only one bolt in the shifter cable bracket. That might have been causing a problem. Um, so I guess I'm going to try to spin this thing over by hand, get the shift select plate pulled off. This is paint that came off. This is silicone, and this is definitely a no-no on one of these trannies. Um, the paint, you know what I mean, from this, that this has stuff coming off. Like I said, it was actually pretty clean down in the porch, which was pretty surprising. All right, so we've got a bunch of stuff cleaned up. Um, the transmission is ready to go. Force cleaned up. I re-lubed everything. Cleaned all the lube off the front of the bearing. Um, it has a pivot ball in there everything's uh attached correctly it did take some time i got uh the parts of the intake the throttle body and everything else is cleaned up washed down the lower brackets these things were quite covered with and the hard pipe it is what it is we're gonna re uh reinstall our valve the correct way i'm gonna clean up the injectors i gotta get those installed and replace that clip and right now we're down to the point of getting this set down in here. Let me get the chain hooked up. I'm just going to do the normal. I'm going to sweep out my mess, what's down there. That way I don't have to lay in it. But uh, we'll get that cleaned up. And we'll be ready to lift this transmission up into place. And get it aligned. I double check the clutch. Everything looks all right there. Um, it sucks. It would be nice to just pull everything out, clean everything up, go over it and fix everything the correct way. Um, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to install transmission and make sure that it works. And, uh, that's part of, uh, part of what it is. Uh, we'll make some notes on some stuff and, you know, if we see something, I'm still kind of trying to look this over. I did wipe some of this off. Wipe some of the spots off over here. Uh, I'm going to look over the... Uh, this stuff over. That's pretty scary right there. That one's almost worn through. Which is probably why it's pushed up. I need to move that clamp back. Or even replace that hose altogether. That way I know it's not a problem when the time comes. I mean, it was leaking a bit of oil, <laughs> leaking a bit of oil here and there. That's for sure. All right, I'm gonna get this uh, transmission slid up over underneath with the chain, and we'll work on getting it picked up. Basically, I just lift these things up, line them up, get some bolts started. I use a little bit of, I'll use a screwdriver and alignment tool to get them started, and just install them just like that. Just a quick little update. All of the charge pipes are now reinstalled. We did get the uh, blow off valve on the correct way now. Um, I cleaned up some stuff, you know, kind of the best that I could. We got a new intake gasket installed. Something good to see. Mopar coil, that's definitely a plus. Wiped off some more of this. We got our lower charge pipe on. Um, it's probably a little dark in here. We have the coolant bottle out of the way. The AC part out of the way. Uh, the line there and we have the bolt the nut that is behind the one that holds on our fuel Got that off. There's one there There's one over underneath. 
Then there will be your vacuum line that connects here and your two vacuum lines. That is ready for the dash to come out. Um, I did get the one wheel installed. Here's our steering column. Everything so far is unbolted on the dash. All the nuts and bolts are ready to come out. We have our door harnesses unplugged. We have our center harness pulled out. Um, this thing was just gonna lift right out. The only two things that we're gonna have to worry about is back in underneath behind this is our two, uh, our two, uh, and what do you wanna call it? The two cables that come from our controls. We also have our blower motor and wiper harness because it runs through and feeds out into the dash right there those two plugs are undone um as it is an 05 those are gray they're green and i think green and black on the uh 03 and 04s and then you want to get your uh dome light plug out of the way kind of just tuck it up here gotta get it in behind this wire but uh the dash is ready to come out we got our shifter pulled um looks like we're gonna need one bushing that I got to get out of the cable here yet. I figure I'm going to just gonna let that out. That way it's not in the way when I go to pull this dash back. Because I'll have to pull this back, rest it on my knee. And then I'll have to get the 8 mil off, which I got to grab that. I'm going to reinstall the boost gauge to where it should be from factory. And make sure that stuff all works. So, all right. I'm going to get at this. Like I said, dash is out. I just got the heater box out. Pretty much uh, the similar thing that always happens with these cars. The firewall insulation just breaks apart. So normally what I try to do is I try to wipe it off a little bit. And then I just use some masking tape. Try to tape it back together. Uh, so there, there's at least something there. You can pull this all out and replace it with like some Dynamat or something like that. But it's just not cost effective with this particular car. So we got that going on. We're going to clean up a couple things. Um, we got the heater core is pulled out. So we could tell we definitely, we definitely had deteriorated heater core here. You can see where we had it pulling up down inside. I'll pull this, I'll pull the EVAP out and clean that. Just, you can see where everything's coming in. It looks like, uh, where's the blend door at? Looks like the blend door's got a nice mouse hole chewed through it, which is pretty common. They like to come in through there. Pretty much destroyed that one. Um, but we're going to do what we can. We'll get everything cleaned up, get everything back together, make sure it's all working. I'll get the box installed and then I'll work on getting everything reassembled out here underneath the hood, our heater core hoses and our nuts and everything reinstalled. That way we can just get everything finished up out here. Put this, pull this out of the way. I always forget to take these off. Um, you always want to make sure that these are empty. And they can drain, yeah. I can see light through it, so that one was good. All right, now's the fun part. Um, I'll show you the <clears throat> this one was ordered from Rock Auto. Actually, the first one I've seen come with the tape that you need for install. Try and light us on the side because I don't want to set it on the ground. But uh, what the hell? Here we go. Lay it next to it. Make sure it looks good. They got our cores are covered. Um, it's got plastic ends. Um, it's just a newer, cheaper style. Um, but they'll work just as fine. All right. I got a lot of a lot of a lot a lot a lot a lot of prep work to do, and uh, getting all the blend doors and everything reassembled. Like I said, there's lots of bolts and clips and everything and stuff's taped on here. So we'll have to, um, I use like some spray glue and I get everything back together, but there we go. All right. We got our heater box all cleaned up on the inside. Just use some glass cleaner and a rag. We got the AC part here cleaned out too. I'm gonna put a little grease on this. Get that a little spinning. Look at this mess. A lot of leaves and everything else here but uh, we're actually ready we're gonna slam this uh, slam this assembly together and I can get this on here this hose was chewed so we got to fix that too lots of problems all right start of another day we're gonna get this mess here all cleaned up um, and then set this stuff off to the side 
Uh, I did pretty much get everything together here except for reinstalling the overflow. And then we can finish getting the rest of the stuff installed here. Um, I'm going to fix up, delete whatever they had going on here for this vacuum gauge. And then I'm going to hook that up the right way. <sighs> I'll have to run the rest of the vacuum lines and get them hooked up. They were clearly a mess. Like right there's a piece. And then here's some more. I'll get that catch can cleaned out. Kind of have everything else here sitting off to the side that I pulled off. Um, I did want to get the uh, show off the shifter here. You can take a look at this. Now, here's what this looks like here on the bottom. We got this really, really, really bent rod right there. Like I said, I'm going to find one, um, one bushing, and then I can get that assembled. Um, we're going to get the dash set in here today. There's a couple things I need to clean up here yet. Some of the firewall that fell off, and then I'll get everything reorganized and ready to go back in here. All right. Let's make it happen. So the dash is in. The, sh the shifter has been replaced. All that stuff is good. Um, we... Uh, Remove this other wiring that was on this harness. It looked like it was a uh, boost box. There was no, or not a boost box, a, a boost timing retarder tucked down in behind there. That's the second one I've seen here. Two cars in a row. Just seems a little weird, but it is what it is. Uh, we're going to get our gauge hooked up the right way. Um, we put a radio bezel in here. We got everything hooked up the way that it should be. We got a nice shifter in here that's working like it should now. We've got a couple more screws we got to go through. I'm going to wait to put up my center console on uh, because I'm still going to probably have to adjust my side to side. I want to make sure that that is correct since we did replace the transmission because the other one was bad. Um, so we have very little yet to put in. we got our dash top. And yeah, I guess once the column's in, um, I'm going to finish getting everything taken care of out here underneath the hood. You can see we just got a couple things up top there yet. And then we're down to, like I said, I got to run a couple vacuum lines back here to get those together here. This one here has to plug in right there. So we'll get that plugged in. Um, what else? We got to fix this mess right here. And then run the rest of the vacuum lines and solenoids, which are sitting there. I think that's pretty much it. I don't really think there's too much more. Oh, catch can's got to get cleaned up so we can get that installed. Lots of dirty stuff. Um, lots of things that should have been addressed on this car a long time ago. There's still a giant list of stuff. So when I'm done with this, I'll go over a list and, and I'll show you everything that I think should be taken care of on this. If this is something that is going to be driven and wanting to be reliable at least be able to have some fun with it before you start worrying about you know doing like rust repair and stuff like that so back to work back at it cleaning stuff up trying to get stuff hooked up um i did clean out this catch can i i honestly don't have anything that fits this so we just re-ran a hose down for the pvc valve everything now is is totally installed um we did get the uh, LEDs that wanted installed. Um, we got the boost gauge hooked up. These weren't hooked to anything. I think they were just powered up to light up. I didn't even bother hooking them up. Um, I have the center console just sitting in here because I'm going to have to address my uh, side to side. I started at a good place. Um, but we are pretty much ready to start this thing up well, let's turn the lights off all right now um just real quick gonna go over this car um it definitely should have brakes definitely should have a fender it's got rust issues throughout it um they're all things that are still going to need to be addressed um it has uneven wear on these tires it's missing a side marker i don't know what's going on with these fog lights these headlights should be bolted in uh, the inner edge of this tire is worn. We have more rust back there. Um, 
It's, it had new wheel bearings. Everything seems pretty tight up in the front end. It did have the slip over rockers installed on it at one time on both sides. Looks pretty good. Got the new, uh, the only thing I gotta find yet is I gotta see if I got a, uh, a shift knob. Um, the bezel uh, for the radio, I installed that, got that stuff all hooked up. So that stuff's doing what it's supposed to do now. Uh, let's just take a quick look. Um, uh, yeah, other than missing some side markers and the fog lights, worn tires. Um, let's see what else is underneath here. Great. Power's going on and off here today, which is pretty enjoyable. We have a rusted rear uh, crash bar. We have rust up in here. We can see. I mean, the car is what it is. Um, I always just like to um, go over and note some of the stuff that I see. Um, this thing does have some other oil leaks that should be addressed. Um, I fixed up what I could. I didn't go crazy. Um, that's not what I'm in here for. Like I said, we're just replacing the trans. We did the heater core, which we know was bad. You see, you see not in the video. That is always something fun to do. Um, I mean, here's some of the... Uh, some of the extra stuff we replace this hose here um it was worn through you can see here and there so we replaced that um research box had a chew in it they had something going on here with this running for the boost gauge this wiring was tucked in here's more wiring that was tucked in the broken intake um it had a broken heat shield which this is quite common for them um here's some of the the stuff that was holding the other shifter in uh, a trans bolt I replaced, a broken clip, some more stuff, damaged, 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 our damaged shifter. Um, I did what I could as far as charging this battery. Like, these are just all the oddities. Um, I tried not to get too crazy on this. I probably could have fixed this shifter up and made it work. But with installing a transmission, I want to make sure it's going to go in and it's going to work. So, um right now i'm kind of at the point where i'm going to get this thing started up we're going to let it run we're going to try to bring it up to temp and um you know we'll run it through the gears we'll check our side our crossover adjustment and just make sure that everything's working uh like i said no coolant leaks we didn't really have that much apart except for our, our heater core all right uh, if there was something else it's going to be hard to tell so off the jacks and i just want to say um this car actually drove way better than i had expected 
Uh, it does pull to the right a little bit, which I think has to do something with the alignment here. Um, I got everything brought up to temp, and I was trying to test out the uh, fan. Um, you can look, I don't know if you can get in there. There's a little bit of rust, but um, it just kept, yeah, you can see where all the coolant was running. All right, so before I was rudely interrupted, the uh, fan was only, it, it turns that far and it was locking up. So it was just popping the fuses. So we swapped that out with another used one. We now have it, that's good to go. Um, normal neon locks the doors on you. Um, like I said, I just came back. I don't have anything dripping on the floor, which is pretty amazing. Um, as I said, I mean, this car still needs lots and lots more love. Here's uh, one of the pop fuses. I put one in to try it after I found it originally popped and it just popped right away. So every time I'd normally see one of these fuses bad, it's because that blower motor's locked up. So I did reach in and I, I, I to see if it moved when I had the box apart and it, it moved a little bit like you just seen. Um, sometimes they're locked tight and I just kind of, I didn't spin it around the entire way. So I figured it was all right. It was just kind of the first time I come across that, but it runs, it drives. Um, it blows heat it, it stops like i said other than pulling to the right a little bit it's a car with some potential now um when it got here it did none of the above so we'll just do a double check here pop the hood bro so You know, like I said, there's, there's like still lots. It looked like the timing. If you look down in here, the pump looks like it was done at one time. Somebody got some silicone on it, which I don't run the silicone. Um, this thing does not squeak. The motor mounts are nice. They look like they were installed right. I did. This one didn't have the tabs ground off for the transmission side, so I took care of that. Um, I didn't worry about painting up any of that stuff too much because um, there's <laughs> there's a lot that can be done to this car. Um, it's just, you know, it's so, so much nicer um, and cleaner. No broken intake, you know. It's only, it only got one, one on the side. The oil's full and very fresh, new and clean. Um, so, we're just going to call this, we're going to call this done. Like I said, we know it has a lot more needs and, you know, I'm sure this is, probably quite a long video and i'm just going to put everything all together so with that we got another one with some potential back on the road see ya